the channel. Now you may remember this. This is uh, a beeswax and mineral oil finish that we made up uh, to use on the shot glasses, the oak shot glasses that we made a little while ago. Now at that time, I did promise a video where I'd make up a range of different waxes uh, for you all to have a go at. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the ingredients we're gonna use is mineral oil, raw linseed oil, beeswax, of course, Caranuba wax, and microcrystalline wax. We've also got a couple of other things to put in as well. But what I'm wanting to try and do is create 10 different polishes, all with slightly different qualities that we're going to investigate and test at the end. To test them, it's my intention to make up 10 small bowls from these ash blanks that we're gonna to use to see how well it comes out. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be making 10 different polishes, so we need something to test them on. And what I've got here is 10, as identical as you can buy pretty much uh, ash blanks. And we're gonna turn them all to the same state in order for us to be able to actually see what the polishes are like. Uh, each one's gonna be turned into a small bowl. Uh, it's going to be finished to 400 grit. Uh, and then we're gonna use the usual, my usual methods. So finished to 400 grit, then it's gonna be sealed. And then we're gonna go with a abrasive paste over the top, which will take the finish to about 800 to 1000 grit. And that's gonna give us a nice base to be able to test what these polishes are like. Right, so I'm gonna make 10 of these now. To make life a little bit easier, I've just marked the centers where each one is. So I'm gonna drill the holes for a worm screw. Uh, each one's gonna have a recess, and I'm gonna be making the recess nice and quickly, just with a force in a bit. Right, I'm not gonna make you sit uh, and watch through 10 of these, so I'll speed up and I'll let you watch one, and then I'll finish these the rest off camera. Send it up to 400. Just gonna go on with the sealer, and then we'll use an abrasive paste. This is the my usual finishing method. It's a bit more time consuming, but it's gonna give it a nice starting point to do our tests on. Bit of sealer, like I did on the outside. And then abrasive paste. And the first one's done. All we've got to do now 
Is it another nine more? Right, I'll go there. Uh, I'll get those done. And I'll see you in a second when we start making up the polishes. Okay, I think we're all about set up. I've got some slow cookers in effect to start melting the wax in. I've got a small electric hob here, which I'm going to be used to keeping the oil warm and uh, for mixing the uh, small pots of wax in. Uh, need to keep it warm while we're mixing everything together. Normally we'd be making like a larger batch and mixing would be easier, but because we're only doing small batches, we have to be able to mix into a small tub and keep mixing, keep mixing, and then remove it from the heat and then let it solidify. Right, so the first step is to start getting our waxes into the slow cookers. I managed to get this thing off uh, eBay quite cheaply. It's a second-hand unit, and it's, I think it'll work quite well. So, CW, Karen Uber Wax. It comes in quite a, a kind of flaky form. MW, that's a microcrystalline wax. You can get this in blocks, or you can buy it in pellet form as well. And the last one is the beeswax. So this is in a raw blocks, which I've just managed to get online. Okay. Right, we'll let all those melt, and then we'll start heating up the oils. Okay, all the waxes seem nicely melted, so I've put the water in the baths to start heating up. Now I can just add the oil. This is a raw linseed oil. So I'll tell you in a little while why we're using this. This is mineral oil. I'll just give these a few minutes just to get up to temperature. Okay, while these things get up to temperature, we'll just talk about the different oils. Uh, we're using mineral oil and linseed oil. Both these oils we're gonna use as a carrier. Now a carrier is just purely something that you add to the main ingredients to help uh, distribute it evenly so it can be applied uh, in even, coat and even coatings. The two oils we have are slightly different properties. Uh, one's a drying oil and the other's just a normal oil. Uh, the linseed oil is a drying oil, which means that over time it'll harden and create a surface. Uh, there is a name for this, but I can't get, actually pronounce it. I've tried a few times, I'm gonna give up. It's something like micropollinization or something like that, but uh, that's neither here or there. The advantages for us by using linseed oil is that we can create two distinct finishes from what we're using. Now the disadvantage of using a linseed oil is that it does require a slightly longer drying time. We can still apply it in exactly the same way, but we would have to wait normally a little bit longer for the wax, sorry, for the oil to harden. Uh, and we can use the item that we've uh, prepared. Now what I intend to make is 10 different polishes. I've got a, a nice little kind of uh, cooking sheet here uh, using the mineral oil, we're going to make one with beeswax, one with carinuba wax, one with microcrystalline, so we can look at the three different properties of those. And then we're going to do a mix of beeswax, carinuba, and microcrystalline. Uh, the fifth one, I'm going to mix carinuba wax, microcrystalline micro wax, and one other item, which we'll see in a little while. Uh, once we've done those, then we're going to start on to the linseed oil, where we're going to do the same things again. We're going to do one with beeswax, one with carinuba wax, one with microcrystalline wax, and then one using all three. Uh, and then one final one using beeswax and carinuba wax, and then a little extra something. Now, what I'm doing here is kind of getting toes wet in the making of polish. This isn't the uh, the final word in making polishes because uh, the different ratios that you mix these ingredients can have uh, an effect on the polish, so the variations are almost endless, but this is a good starting point. Right, give these oils a little bit longer to warm through, and then we'll make a start. 
Okay. Heating up the oils in a bath of water as opposed to being over a direct heat because we don't want to get the oils too hot. Now, the oils will have the capacity to go well beyond the boiling temperature of water, which would make it incredibly dangerous to start using. So we've kept it in this bath and that's going to limit how hot those things get. Okay, I've got some scales. I'm going to start making these up. I've got 10 of these little tins. Uh, each one's numbered one to 10 to go along with my recipe sheet. I'm going to be mix mixing them on a scale. I'm going to do it by grams. We're doing it by weight as opposed to volume. So the first one we're going to use 50 grams of mineral oil to 15 grams of beeswax. I'm just going to sit that in the bath to let it mix, or while we mix it. Lift that back out. Put its corresponding lid, not quite on it, but just gently like that. And that's the first one done. Right, the second one, same again, this time with Karen Uber wax. Place that in the water. Give it a stir. And this one's going to be the same again, but with microcrystalline wax. Don't worry about getting your measurements exactly right. 15 grams into the bath. Give it a mix. Put that out. This. Next one. Now this is a, a mix up of all three. So we're going to use again 50 grams of the oil. And then five grams of each of these waxes. I'll spend extra time making sure that this one is very thoroughly mixed with it having three different waxes in there. This last one, we're going to be using Karanuba wax and microcrystalline, but we're also going to add some coconut oil as well. It should give us an, uh, an interesting aroma. And also coconut oil can help penetrate wood a little bit deeper. I'm just going to melt this coconut oil first. I'll do that in the bath. Coconut oil generally melts at room temperature. This is processed coconut oil, so it is generally a little bit higher. Temperature required before it melts. The oil will melt the rest of that. Okay, Karen Uber wax. Use eight grams of this. Another eight grams of the microcrystalline. Near enough. Right, back into the bath to mix up. The bath of water, by the way, has a lower level of water than the oil has. That way the pot will sit on the base and it won't try and float around while you're just trying to give it a stir. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just do a quick tidy up and then we'll do the next batch. Okay, we're all ready to start again. This time we're going to be using the linseed oil as the carrier oil. I'm going to start off, like before, with linseed oil and beeswax. Around 50, oops, I'll pick up a second. Around 50 grams of linseed oil and 15 grams of beeswax. This time, 50 grams of linseed oil and 15 grams of caranupa wax. The last on the single units is a microcrystalline. This is going to be mixed up with the three again, so 50 grams of linseed oil and then five grams each of the three waxes. Okay, well the last one we're going to make up is going to have beeswax, caranuba wax, and a little bit of orange essence. This should hopefully give it a beautiful smell at the end. A few drops in there. Class one in the bath. all these dry so they're hard and then we can try them on the wood. Okay so here we have our finished waxes. The top row are all those made with mineral oil and the second row are all the ones made with raw linseed oil. We used raw linseed oil as opposed to boiled linseed oil just to ensure that each one of these waxes is going to be food safe. Okay so going through them these two were both made with beeswax. These two were both made with caranuba. These two are microcrystalline. These two are a mix of all three. And these two, well the top one, we have a mix of caranuba wax, microcrystalline, and a little bit of coconut oil. And the bottom one is uh, beeswax, caranuba wax, and a little bit of orange essential oils. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is test them on the test 10 bowls I made earlier on. I've paired them up to try and keep them uh, like for like. So you can see these top two are fairly similar in grain and we'll be using these two to test uh, the beeswax and so forth through the pile. Okay, I couldn't quite get 10 blanks that looked all identical. So we're just gonna have to make do with what we've got here. Okay, so I'll clear up this lot and then we'll start waxing the bowls. Okay, we'll start off with number one, which is the beeswax and mineral oil. I'm going to apply it in the same way to every piece. Give it a nice light coat and then bring up the speed as we're polishing it in. Now the beeswax and mineral oil uh, mix I did before uh, was a lot more oil than wax. And this one's considerably firmer than that one. As you can see, it's uh, a pretty hard wax. Okay, second one we have is beeswax and linseed oil. Get a fresh cloth. You can instantly see the difference in color. And if you were putting this onto a wood which hadn't been, uh, had a sealer on, you can see it certainly darkening and yellowing the surface.
Okay, this is the next one, which is a Karanuba wax with mineral oil. Now you may be familiar with Karanuba wax being the wax that is most often used on car polishes, so this should theoretically give us a higher shine than the beeswax. Times the car remover wax with linseed oil. And now we're on to the microcrystalline wax with mineral oil. Oh, blimey. <laughs> right, I was expecting that to be uh, firm, but it isn't. <laughs> right, let me just sort this out. Right, today is an incredibly warm day in the UK. One of the hottest days of the summer which is quite ironic because the kids have just come back to school, which is probably why that is still quite mushy. Right. Okay, this time it's the microcrystalline wax with linseed oil. I shall approach this with care. That's quite firm. It's very firm. It's quite interesting. Okay, now we have beeswax, Karen Uber wax, and microcrystalline in the mineral oil. It certainly seems to be the shiniest one yet. Okay. Right, this one, same again. Beeswax, Karanuba wax, and microcrystalline, but this time in the linseed oil. Okay, this one is going to be microcrystalline, caranuba, and coconut oil. Uh, I did smell the wax as it was and I couldn't smell the coconut oil, so I'm not sure if I put enough in. I asked the wife to try the same, and she couldn't smell it either. So I may not have put enough in. We'll find out in a second. Right, last one is the beeswax, the caramobu wax, and this time we put some essential oil, uh, orange, in there. And again, I asked my dear lady to smell it for me because I couldn't smell the orange, uh, and she couldn't either. But we'll see if we can smell it once it's on the piece. It may be a case of I just didn't, like the coconut oil, I didn't put enough in. Sorry, this is in linseed oil, I forgot to say. Okay, 
Okay, let's take a look at them all together. Okay, so there we all are. Uh, they're in the same order as before. So we've got the mineral oil at the top and the linseed oil down below. We've got beeswax, caranuba, microcrystalline, mixes of the three. And then we've got the caranuba wax and microcrystalline with a bit of coconut oil. And then the final one is beeswax with caranuba wax and some essential oil. Now these two, when I first put it on, there was a very, very faint smell, but I think in order to get the aroma through, the quantity needs to be increased. Uh, first impressions when putting them on, the wax is made with the mineral oil, seemed a little less firm than those made with the linseed oil. Uh, in all cases, apart from the, the sloppy microcrystalline wax, which is that one, uh, everything was actually firmer than I would have probably liked it. So going forward, if I was to make these up again, I would increase the amount of base oil and obviously decrease the amount of wax used. So if you're gonna try this, please try with less quantities than I used. Uh, in terms of shine, I honestly thought that the Karanuba waxes finishes would be shinier than the beeswax. And from the lighting, the type of wood I've used, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of difference. There is a little bit, but I honestly thought it'd be more. The time that you start to see real differences in the shine is when you start mixing the waxes. So these two that have the three types of uh, wax mixed together, and these two have two types of wax mixed together, they do produce more of a shine. Uh, the next closest to them is actually the microcrystalline, which uh, is slightly surprising. Now in terms of properties, beeswax we all know it's a nice natural finish. It gives a nice luster to the wood. Caranuba wax uh, is a very hard wearing wax. It can be a little bit brittle. Uh, the actual wax in the pots in a couple of the uh, Caranuba ones had cracked. So that is testament to that. Uh, Microcrystalline uh, is a very, very good finish, very, very hard finish uh, and waterproof finish. And it does protect pieces an awful lot from fingerprints. I've got a friend who does a lot of shows with his amazing work uh, and he always makes sure there's got a good coat of microcrystalline on his pieces just to keep the fingerprints off it. Three waxes together really does give a nice balanced feel, a beautiful shine. It's gonna be hard wearing. So that is definitely, uh, more in tune to what you get from the commercial brands. Uh, these two at the end were a bit of fun, but again, just mixing two of those waxes together does give a very nice shine. Now the base oils we use, uh, mineral oil uh, is a very, very nice, uh, completely natural oil. Uh, it doesn't do the world any harm, but it doesn't do, uh, it doesn't add any kind of really long-term protection. Linseed oil, will harden over time, giving it uh, a lot more protection to fingerprint to wear and tear, waterproofing, etc. But it does take a bit longer to cure. So anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, I'll put a write up at the bottom of this or a link to a document where I'm going to put all the findings in, uh, all the information I've gathered about these waxes, uh, and that'll be available to you. Just look at the description below uh, and it'll be obvious where it is. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a, a like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment as well, then you will be entered into the giveaway when we get to 2000 subscribers. I'm gonna hang on to these waxes and use them on the projects in the future. I may uh, melt them down a little bit and add a bit more base oil, but I'll see how that goes. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.